Hello and welcome to World of Tanks with me, Tech, and this is my ELC game, and I hope you enjoy it. So, uh, what are the notable points about the uh, ELC? Uh, well, it's a tier 5 uh, French light tank, and it's absolutely awesome. Well, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, that is due to its low profile and its capability to be able to do lots of damage very, well, not, I wouldn't say very quickly, because it has about a 10, 10, 12 second reload with 100% crew. Um, and you can probably get that a little bit lower if you have a whole female crew in there, so there's only two crew members, so it's actually really easy to get crew skills on as well, which is brilliant. And when you compare that to the fact that it has excellent mobility, and it can vomit about the back of it with next to 70 mile an hour uh, top speeds, it's, it's absolutely crazy good, to be honest. Um, when they introduced the new physics, I thought they would give it a slight, uh, a slight nerf, due to its ability to be able to turn on a knife point with the handbrake, but it didn't, and that's but that's, yeah. So as you can tell, uh, I'm going to start off here. I'm going to go for a, like a scouting run, and it's not so much as I know I don't have any sort of support to be able to deal any damage. It's more just to gather intel, to kind of understand what we're going to face on this flank um, as a whole. And I don't actually initially spot anything. And I think part of this is due to the fact that I do this a little bit too early, and it seems to be that they haven't actually re-arrived yet, with the exception of a couple of light well, with a light tank, which ends up getting lit by the BK, which is just making his way over now. Uh, so, as I was saying, the, the ELC is a hell of a good tank. Um, it's something that, is, as I say, one of my favourite tier tier, uh, tier 5, tier 6, which is what this map is, mainly predominantly tier 6, but there's a couple of tier 5s thrown into the mix. So, we see this uh, we see this leopard that's just pushed down into the cap circle, and he's doing quite a good job of well, trying to cap out. I guess he went for a little uh, scouting run and made it into the dip just to kind of get out where the guns. I just kind of poke over a ridge line just to see if I can light anything else up that could be a little bit slower that's coming across, but again, I'm un unsuccessful. Is there's not that much on this flank. They seem to put a lot of their heavies into the north, and I'm kind of against that because I find that if you send your heavies to that, so there's really hard to get over in case we cap out. Uh, it's, they can't really get there in time unless you have medium support over this side that's there and alive to decap. So I tried to come down to the cap to try and kill this leopard, but our team managed to take him out pretty quickly and efficiently, which is great news for me. And I just double back for a second just to make sure that if I was spotted and the artillery was kind of going to take like a poke at me, that there's no chance of me kind of getting hit by that artillery, which would take a sizable chunk of my health. Because this vehicle only has 400 hit points, which at this tier is pretty bad. But I guess there has to be a few few things with the tank to balance it out, which is its armor, which I believe about 25 millimeters thick on the hull, and at the best point probably about 70 millimeters thick on the turret. It's armed with a militant 90mm gun, which rips through nearly anything, which is what really makes this tank especially good when you mix that with the mobility. So I come up over, and there's a T, yeah, a T34, I believe, up a T34 medium Russian tank, uh, just kind of sitting there. He's already taken a sizable hit from someone, and I kind of come up with the intention to put a shot, and he's actually aimed my direction. So I, I decide against it, and just tell my team, if you can focus in, we can get behind this Excelsior, which is just behind this ridge line. I tried to keep him lit for our team, and I kind of undecided whether to cap out at this moment because we're losing 1-6 and we're down about 2,000 damage, coming on to 3. And you can tell that by just underneath the uh, the numbers there, as we take out the Excelsior, um, underneath the team score, and you can, you can see the actual hit point pool of what the difference is between the two teams. Um, you'll see here the minimap pops up, that's actually in the replay. Uh, I was just making sure that you can see the, uh, see the, the tanks instead of the player names, because there's a bit of a rage that goes on in the team, obviously, because we're losing by 3-7 now, and apparently we're all idiots, but yeah, that's, that's the life. I'm a little bit too slow to get the killing shot off from this KV-85, which I believe is just trying to crest that ridge line. And I'm kind of undecided right now on whether or not I should be trying to help the guys in the cap circle, or I should go off and help this ARO-44 that's pushing off, as the people in the cap circle are going to meet some heavy contestants very soon. To be fair to them, they do a very good job of keeping them off, and I probably couldn't have managed to do this without their, like, help. Put off a nice little skid around that corner, which is quite dangerous. Could have taken on track there, which would have impeded my time. But I come over and decide to come and help this air out, because I believe we've got a lot of guns there, and I know we're not going to cap. It's kind of pointless to try and cap in this situation, because the way that they're staggering their defence means that we're constantly going to be decapped, basically. So I think what's the best plan of action for this uh, KV, uh, KV-1S, I believe? Let's just put this bridge line in front of me. Now, I decide not to go in like directly with the ARL 44 because I don't really want this KV-1S uh, KV sorry, to know that I'm like here already. So I decide to use these bushes as a bit of a line of camo. Like, I have to come over quite a long way over the ridge line because I've got quite bad gun depression due to the height of this tank. And unfortunately, the shot goes slightly low and bounces off the upper glaciers of the tank. And it kind of means that I don't manage to get another. It would have been nice to get a bit of damage there, but I just started to feel a bit depressed by this point in the game, thinking, am I ever going to catch a break and be able to do something with, my, with the battle? We've been reduced to four people left on our team, one of which is artillery. 
I believe. Yep, the M4, M41. Lots of numbers I can't remember. But yeah, so we decided to come over to help the AR-44 basically to take out this K1S, which proves to be quite a fun, fun challenge. Um, there's two of us, one of him, so it shouldn't be too hard to be able to get a flank on him. Now, I'm being mindful because that artillery likes to situate around here, and you can see I'm kind of just constantly keeping the camera just so I can see both sides. And I come over trying to find a line of attack. Um, and actually, what I like to do is auto aim onto the uh, onto the tank when I can. So the gun is always auto aim. You can see it switches left to right there, which is just auto aim the left click onto the tank. So it's already kind of aimed. And as you see, I managed to get round and I managed to pull off the snapshot and managed to put the 90mm uh, shell straight through his hull and take him out of the game. So we come across and you can see we've spotted a T28 which has been AFK in their base for pretty much the whole game and it's not really done much to the team. We've managed to narrow the gap down now to only 900 uh, damage to 350. We can pull this back. We're not losing by very much. Uh, so the score is a 1050 as I come on to another nice little uh, medium tank I can take some free damage on. And I see at the last minute there's uh, uh, this artillery using him as bait and I decide that I need to kill this guy first because he's more of an immediate threat than an AFK T28 and so I managed to pull off a nice handbrake turn to be able to put the shot right into his bum and take him out of the game as well now I can just continue to farm a little bit of damage on this uh, T28 and I just take quite a long turn here just so I make sure I'm reloading in time just to do the drive line, keep my speed up because I know I need to get back to the camp to support the ARL44 which is trying to uh, trying to basically decamp I believe uh, right now you can see the end, uh, in well, the artillery, I can't remember what tank it is right now, it's quite small on the screen. But um, he, he gets a bit arsy about it and about his team and stuff in chat, which is always a bit, a bit of a laugh. So, we continue to come over and try and help this air of 44 because he needs help to come and, well, basically deal with the tanks we have left in the cap. There's a KV-2 and a KV-85 and they have artillery support. So we have to be mindful of that, that they could potentially be shooting or well, aimed in on sort of the cap circle and being ready for people to be spotted. Now, the KV... 1S managed to situate himself to try and stop us from progressing onto the camp, but he doesn't actually spot me while I use these bushes for a kind of added camo bonus as I come up and just put a nice shot into his side on a slightly low roll, uh, but it's good enough and you can kind of see his turn his turret as if like, what, who, who shot me, like, that's not cool, don't shoot me at the side when I'm trying to engage another tank, that's not fair, but yeah, we, we've decided to just sort of pull away for a second and I could have put a second shot into him, but I'm aware that if he was kind of, as you saw, he was trying to aim in on me there, that it's pretty better for me just to drop off the radar and unfortunately the uh, artillery managed to finish off our friend of the ARL and so I decide now the best option is not to go in on the uh, KV-1S because it would be quite, well it would give away my position for one and also I can use my, well the fact that I'm not actually spotted right now to kind of get in position to try and maybe just take out one of these uh, tanks in the camp so I come up all the way up to the, uh, the edge of the A line and I'm going to just work my way up here just until I spot something and I end up spotting the KV-1S again and I managed to get quite a lucky shot here because he started to move around to get into cover and I managed to pull off the shot and get into uh, take him out of the game as well so there's another tank out which is great news for us and not so great news for the enemy team so there's only actually two uh, you can tell by the team, well, the, the damage in between the teams that there's not that much hit points left for the two enemy tanks um, I have full hit points so I can, well I could feasibly take a shot but not from the KV to KV2 I believe the KV2 could one shot me about 85% of the time, so we want to be mindful of that. So I begin to kind of make my way back over to kind of keep on their toes, guessing where I'm going to pop up from next. I've decided it's probably in my best interest to try and come over to the other side of the cap and see if I can maybe, well, you never know, I might just swap the artillery, or I might even see, well, there's only one of them in the cap right now, which suggests the artillery hasn't moved out of his kind of firing location. And so I come round at the last minute, I actually spot the artillery, and you can see I jerk the camera around just to have a quick look. Again, you can see I managed to get the auto aim on just there and I'm coming round to come and see if I can deal with him. Now I know he's spotted me too, and I really don't want to well, take a shell from this guy because it could be the end of it all if I do it. You can see he's aimed onto that corner, so I decided to really sharply turn the tank around on using the handbrake like I mentioned earlier, and progress to go off in the other direction. Now I start wiggling to make sure the artillery can't uh, get the shell off of me, and I kind of view this to my advantage, because now the KV2 would have known that I was spotted in that location last, but I kind of expect him to think that I'm going to come from kind of that area, that, that sort of direction, so he's probably looking my way right now. So I decide to use the speed of the tank and manage to get all the way to the other end of the map before he kind of manages to think I can even get there. And again, use the same sort of techniques I used before because I, don't, I tend to find that if you kind of progress onto the cap from the other area, uh, the other end of the, well, from the opposite end where I'm progressing now, it's, it hasn't got as much camo um, in terms of bushes and things you can use to kind of keep the camo bonus up. Unluckily for me, 
they spot me coming over to this area, and I think to myself, and this is, ugh, oh, you can see I'm right in the chat there, that it's this mission for me, that I've got to go all the way back over to the side, but I actually do him by making him think that I'm heading that way, and decide to double back. Now, again, this is a really cool technique to use when you're on battlefield, is that you can just kind of play games with people. This, like, people tend to overthink in these sort of carry situations, so normally you can duke people just by doing, making the obvious play, and I decide that that's kind of not what I want to do here, and I decide it's probably in my best interest to come around and try and get these, well, now 74 cap points, which, if I decap this, means it's a defender medal. I'm a bit reckless there, I knock over a tree, and I'm hoping that he didn't see that, and I don't think he will have, because I believe he's positioned quite forward in the cap circles, where it makes it quite hard for me to get the shot off, uh, due to the kind of, the curve of this hill. And so I come up to this uh, fallen tree just to kind of, as I say, I pop into the bush which lights him up almost instantly. And now you can just see the corner of his turret, and I was kind of worried by the angle of it, because it kind of, it could ricochet, but I decide I need to take the shot and decap the base, and luckily for me, it goes in. And it lowers him down to enough to be able to be a one-shot, and you could tell he thought he was going to win, and he put a good game in the chat, but no, not today, sonny. We're going to kill you. And um, we'll find out later if we manage to pull that off. So. Again, I'm going to use uh, the same technique as before. I'm going to make it all the way back over to the other side of the map using the excellent mobility of this tank, uh, just to basically make sure that he kind of keeps guessing again and see what we can do. Now, I'm up to four kills, and I'm kind of thinking, well, this is a good game for most DLC drivers. 1,400 damage. That's, that's quite decent. Um, but again, they've still got cap pressure on. And if you notice, when I shot the KV-2, it didn't disrupt the cap all the way to zero. Now, what that means is that there's more than one tank in the cap circle, and that means that I have to be more careful now that, well, I guess because I didn't kill the artillery when I had the chance, that it means that it's kind of made my life a little bit harder now in that I have two guns to face rather than one. And it means if I get spotted, then uh, my chances are a lot slimmer now of survival. Now, I come down this sort of slope here, and I'm, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because it gives me the maximum chance of not being spotted, because I'm as far away from them as possible. I can slowly cut in towards them, which means that during the spotting mechanics of the game, means that I should be able to spot them before they spot me. Now, I'm, I nearly roll my tank there, which literally le leads me on to knocking over a tree, which the KV-2 will have seen, because he's a good player, and you can see his turret is facing this way, so I'm thinking, crap, 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 just keep moving, don't stop. Just go through, I've disrupted the cap for a second there, I can play a little bit longer now. But one of them fired, we heard the gunshot from one of them, and I'm thinking to myself, well, if that's either of them, that means that I could potentially kill at least one of them. And I'm not 100% if they'll be able to hit me, so we'll find out. But I decided to come round, the KV-2 is facing the wrong way, and I managed to, well, his turret's pointing the right way, but I managed to put a shot into his bum and take him out of the game. Now, I'm really lucky here that the artillery doesn't hit me, and I guess that jerk to the left saved my skin there. And I notice he's fired, I can turn around and I can deal with him now. This is my chance to win the game. So I'm coming in here really quickly, I managed to put a shot into him. He rams me, 41 damage, but unluckily for him, I managed to kind of reverse round. Again, the, the reverse speed's quite slow on this tank, but I managed to get the tank facing the other way and put that speed to good use. And he now is, well, he has to reverse to be able to get the gun onto me. He could have gone forwards, which would have been the right play there, but I managed to put that final shot in and end the game. As I said, if you like this video, please rate, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and take it easy. I'll see you next video.